Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Let me show you a picture of the biggest bass I've ever caught on top water. If you look really close inside the mouth of this bass, you'll see this lure. And this is a top water lure that I designed probably about five years ago. It's perfectly weedless and it's uh, really caught a lot of good fish for me, including saltwater fish. The key to the success of this thing is weedless treble hooks. And that's what we're doing on this video. We're making weedless treble hooks real easy, real simple. Stick around. Before I get into everything you're going to need for this video, I just want to remind you, if you enjoy these kinds of videos, if you like these builds, let me know and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. It really helps uh, build this channel. Anyway, let's get to it. You're going to need some treble hooks, obviously, and you can use anything from uh, number four on up to probably a one-aught. Any larger or smaller, and you're going to have to change the uh, gauge of the wire. And I'm using this number five stainless steel leader wire. It's 0 0.014 uh, inches in diameter. And it's single, single strand. And you gotta make sure that whatever wire you use is not annealed. You'll need some crazy glue or some UV resin. Uh, and these little self-contained little uh, UV resin glue sticks that uh, come with their own little light, really handy uh, and almost perfect for this. You'll need some hand tools for cutting and bending. And if you want to dress up the hook at the end, you'll need something to go ahead and wind the line and uh, put on your, your dressing. And you're gonna need a way to hold on to the thing while you're working. I like using my fly tying vise, but a pair of uh, locking pliers works almost as good. So the first thing we need to do is to cut the length of those little wire gates. And for hooks that are from uh, size four up to a, a size one, you should be able to get away with cutting three pieces, two inches long each. Now, the only other thing you have to do to these little pieces of wire is to kink them at the end. You got to put a tiny little 90 degree turn uh, that's maybe a 16th of an inch maximum from the end. Take the wire and just grasp it about a sixteenth of an inch down with these little tiny pliers and just bend it over 90 degrees. It's as simple as that. You want to try to keep it as small as possible. That even is just maybe a little too long and I'm going to take uh, just a tiny bit off. There you go and hopefully you can see that and I'm going to do that to all the wires. All right so it's time to move over here and start using this little vise. Okay, so the first step is to place these little pieces of wire uh, in their location. And where they go is they get hooked in between the two hooks facing you and then they get glued in place. And the best way to do it is to put a little bit of glue. Now you can use uh, crazy glue here and I'll, I'm gonna show you one where I do that. But here I'm using some uh, UV resin as glue. And I'm just gonna drop this in and then you can actually use one of these little pens and they light up and I'll show you they actually work and they're only like five bucks or six dollars if you can find it online get you one you can also use a UV flashlight uh, they work pretty well and I've recently had a question about whether I had a good recommendation for an inexpensive UV flashlight and I do not <laughs> this is an inexpensive UV flashlight and I would give it uh, probably a 6 out of 10. It works, but it doesn't work very well. It's kind of weak. Now, in the end, when I've got all three on, I'll put this on my bigger UV light so it sets up hard and fast so we can get through this. And you don't want to put any glue in the crotch between the two hooks because you want to make sure that you don't eat up that space. That's where your little wire bend goes into, and you really need that to keep that wire from spinning later when it's in, actually in use. A little handheld UV uh, LED really comes in handy just to do an initial set so you don't drop this little wire all over the place. Now that we've got all three in there, now we've got to uh, build up uh, enough of a UV cast around it that 
uh, it'll hold it all together and won't come apart ever. And it'll give you a little strength while you bend the wire into the proper shape. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in down here where this, where the wire actually attached, hooked in here. This little pen also comes with its own little vial of uh, UV resin in it. So it's really a pretty good deal. And you can kind of lay this in. They're actually pretty easy to find online. The only caveat I would tell you is that the little light uh, basically is uh, pretty crappy. The batteries die out really quickly and then replacing the batteries is more expensive than replacing the pen. Make sure you got enough on here to make it strong. And you just spin it to get it nice and even. And if you're using a vice grip, you can always grab these uh, by the wires and just slowly just holding them very gently, you can just slowly turn it and get the, uh, the glue dispersed like you want it. And you can tilt it up or down. And at that point, you can start exposing it to UV light and you can see it develops a nice, even sort of bulge to it. And I'll just get it nice and firm with this light. This light is not strong enough to set it like really hard in a, in a short period of time but it will get it uh, hard enough so it won't sag anymore. And that's probably where we are right now. So now I've got the resin pretty nicely distributed on this thing uh, and it's hard enough so it won't sag, but it's not hard uh, enough to actually finish it off. So I'm gonna put this on my little mini turner here and you can see it's just a little turner motor and it'll just turn exposed to that light. And I'm just gonna leave it turning there for the next few minutes. But in the meantime, let me show you how to do one with crazy glue. So preferably you're gonna to wanna to use a crazy glue that's sort of a high controlled crazy glue that's just a little bit thicker. And it's a good idea to use a CA glue accelerator. I like to use a little tool to spread this stuff so it doesn't get on uh, areas that I don't want it on. It's as simple as doing the same thing as we did last time. You wanna lay it in place. And then when you got it right where you want it, you give it a spritz and uh, that glue will set. So as you move to the next one, you'll have to wipe off some of the, the accelerator so it doesn't just set up on you before you can put on your wire. And we'll just continue the process. Same deal. All right, so now I got all three of them in there. I'm gonna put a little bit more glue on top of them. Not much, just uh, enough to fill the gaps now I'm not going to put too much glue on here because I'm not going to rely on the glue. You can't really rely on the crazy glue when you do it this way. You really have to put a whipping on it and I'm going to do that next. Now you don't have to dress the hook, but the strength of the line in that whipping will hold those wires in place pretty much forever. Now I usually like to use a, a color that gives you a nice contrast on the, on the lure, but you don't have to use this. You can go with black or you can go with something like this. This is a silver uh, colored line and I'm going to go with this silver uh, colored line just to show you that it can uh, kind of blend in. So remember this is just really a whipping designed to hold these wires in place. Now the most important part of the strength of this is right up here at the base of the eye of the hook. That's where you're going to bend over your wire. I'm going to go ahead and put in a few half hitches in here. This is a little bit of a pain in the butt with these wires, but it can be done. You just kind of have to manipulate your, uh, your whipping tool a bit. And there we go. Now I'm just going to cut off the excess and then I'm going to saturate that string with super glue. And it's a good idea to have something to spread this stuff with and get it to saturate the fibers. All right, so this is looking pretty good. This is the one I just did with uh, Crazy Glue. And here's the one next to it on the bottom that we did with uh, the um, UV resin. Okay, 
Okay, so that's a simple little uh, dressing. I'm gonna trim this way back. Let me get the UV resin on here. When I'm trying to do something that essentially is just aesthetics, just making it look good, I like to use a brush because a brush will help me distribute it really evenly uh, without getting a big old ball at the end or anything. So now we've got them all assembled and they're ready to be transformed into the final result that we're shooting for. You can see the gates and the angles that you have to have. All right, so the first thing you got to notice is that there are two wires on one side of the eye. You got to keep track of that because those got to be distributed to the two hooks closest to them. What you want to do is bend the first one over in the direction of the hook tip and you want to have it aligned as best you can. They're not going to align perfectly until you get it bent. And you can see you want it down till it's just barely above the hook tip. And you want to do that with all of them. So the next one will be on the same side of the eye. And you're going to take it to the nearest hook tip, just above the hook, just like that. And then the final one is by itself on the other side of the eye. And there you go. Now we've got to do the final bend. You, what you want to do is grab that wire uh, right up against the tip of that hook just so it's barely touching your pliers. And then you want to bend it over 90 degrees down it, towards the hook tip. And you can see it went a little over 90, but that's about right, right there. Okay. You want to do that to all of them. So the next step is just cutting off the excess and you don't want to leave much more than an eighth of an inch. You just manipulate it just a little bit to make sure they're all aligned and you want them just so that the top of that bend is just above the hook tip. So you have the least amount of force that it takes to actually set that hook. And there it is. It's actually, that one's actually really perfect. And you do the same thing with one that's dressed. It's just a little harder to see on camera, I think. You bend it over. Now I will say that I, I can make one of these probably in like 10 minutes uh, faster if I'm not dressing the hook. It's just a lot slower when I'm having to explain it and record it. There you go. So I'm pretty happy with these. They're pretty nicely dressed uh, as far as I'm concerned and they're really functional. Take it from me, they really do work. Now I'm gonna give you a little bit of advice. You're gonna be probably tempted to use a little heavier wire. Don't do it. Uh, the heavier the wire, the harder it is to get your hook set. And in any kind of uh, setup where you've made your bait weedless, you're gonna to have to set the hook in soft plastic or with this. And you don't wanna make that wire any stiffer. And so I hope this opens up uh, some, maybe some new avenues for your, for your lure building uh, because I really like uh, hard body top water lure that are weedless and they're not very common. Well, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Thank you for all your comments and all your suggestions. And tomorrow, if the weather holds, I'm going to the Gulf and I'm going to be fishing everything I've made in the last month and a half. So the next video will probably be a fishing video. I'll see you then.